Welcome back to Castle Grounds Apiary. Today we are going to install a wildflower meadow. Well, we're going to try to install one anyway. Now I know some people who keep bees say that planting wildflowers on your property don't really help you or your bees because bees are going to go up and out two miles and they'll never touch your flowers. Well, maybe. We're going to try it anyway. Worst case scenario, I have less to mow, I have a better looking property, and well, maybe other pollinators will take advantage of it. So, first, pick out your seed. You have a few different options when picking out wildflower seed. You can get the stuff at the big box store. I think in general, most of it has a lot of fillers and stuff in it. I haven't seen any like pure high quality wildflower seed at Lowe's or Tractor Supply or wherever. Um, if you find it, great. Uh, if not, you can go online like I did. I have this, got this from eBay. Five pound bag, which is this is 50 bucks. That's as cheap as it gets. And there's no filler, this is pure seed. Um, problem is you, you know, question the quality. Not sure how good that is. Um, so I got that, I have 10 pounds of that eBay seed. And I also don't know, well at least I don't remember if this is perennial, annual. They don't really give you much information, they just send you that clear plastic bag. So I also went to American Meadows, sorry, and uh, got a few different kinds of their seed. Now, theirs is pure. It comes with, it comes labeled what's in it, tells you how much it is, um, tells you what is in the variety because all these have a bunch of different varieties. Now, I have, I bought a bunch of different kinds. You can get one, you can just get 10 pounds of the butterfly and hummingbird mix if you want uh, but I'm a terrible gardener and I want to diversify and increase my odds of having a flower bloom so I just got a bunch different kinds Texas Oklahoma mix that's got to be good huh now wildflower or I'm sorry American meadow seeds is definitely more expensive than eBay uh, but hopefully you get what you pay for. With these guys, like most of you, I went and I read the reviews of every single mix I bought on their website. And they do have reviews, which makes me feel better. And it seems like anybody who had problems, they were had, they had customer support respond and tried to help them resolve it. And I think in some cases I saw that they were gonna send them from some free seed. So, or at least maybe, maybe I imagine that. I'm not sure, but they're a reputable company. Um, now, one of the things that you don't know for sure, at least that I didn't know for sure, is how, how much does this get me, you know? This seems like a lot of seed, but I've got a lot of ground to cover. So, the American Meadows website kind of gives you a, a conversion, you know, a quarter pound, or this is one pound, covers a thousand square feet. And that... And their, and their terms is a heavy concentration, a pound per thousand foot, I think anyway. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, if you need a, a sparser mix where you, it's not as thick, then I think they say that you can get away with a half pound per thousand foot. Now don't quote me on that, just go to their website and see for yourself. Um, and if you have just a nice square rectangular plot that's pretty easy to calculate, if, if you're like me, and you have these weird kind of roundish, oblong, funky shaped um, spots where you're going to plant your seed, what I would recommend is going to Google Earth or downloading the Google Earth app. I'll show you guys a quick video of how you can use that to um, calculate your square footage. So here's my property within Google Maps. You can see I've kind of created an outline for where we tilled. If you click on the properties and go to measurements, you can toggle the drop down menu to show square feet. You can then manipulate your pins or your points and uh, change the area, make it bigger or smaller, and it, and it changes the square footage in real time. So that's real handy. 
if you have weird shapes like these and you need to kind of calculate roughly what the square footage is without getting too detailed um, and then if you want to create something new you just add a new shape plug it in and that's all you got to do so that's pretty handy so once you've done that you'll know how much seed you need to buy once you buy the seed and you have your area calculated well then you need to do your site prep in my case we tilled some people say you don't need to till but I think it's probably best that you do um, if you're tilling a large area like I think I've got an acre or so total between the three or four spots that we're sowing um, it's about an acre you could do that by hand you could do that with a walk behind unit um, those that would take a while and be a pain in the butt um, what I did because my tractor wasn't strong enough to uh, power my three-point tiller I just went to Facebook Marketplace and I found a guy on there. I just typed in uh, tractor tiller and I found a guy that would come out for 40 bucks an hour. He'd come out and till. There's Fred the tractor man. He's getting to work while I get to work. Putting that dirt up, putting that dirt down, flicking that dirt around. You know what I'm saying. Good job, Fred. Keep it up and he got everything done really quickly. And he had a he had a four hour minimum, so I ended up paying him 240 bucks, even though it only took him about an hour. But that's still cheaper than a walk behind tiller, and I didn't have to break a sweat. So if you don't have a tiller, just look, at, look on Craigslist, look on Facebook Marketplace. You can find somebody to do it for you for less than you'd pay for a tiller at the store. And it's not something you need all the time, at least not me. So, all right, so from there, uh, now we're ready to sow the seed you can they say that you can just dump this in a bucket with some sand just all-purpose con construction sand or uh, play sand whatever and you can put it in the bucket mix it up throw it out I'm gonna put it in this little broadcaster this walk behind broadcaster that way I get a little more even distribution and I'm going to kind of pick spots based on so some of this the reason I bought multiple kinds is because some spots like over here by my tree line gets partial shade some spots are full sun some spots are a little kind of dappled sun so I got different mixes that are supposed to be better in different sunlight conditions uh, your use case and application may may vary so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pick spots for the certain types and uh, hopefully get the desired result so I'm gonna start with my one pound honeybee mix and that is because it is a slightly taller mixture and when I say taller um, you can go to the website and you can see just the, the different types and varieties of flowers and generally speaking at least compared to my other uh, mixes the flowers in this batch are a little taller on average and so I want to and it also is good in partial shade so I want to put these this mix more on the border to create a little bit of depth I don't want taller flowers on the inside of my property I want them to be on the outside and that's also where there's a little more uh, shade so let's see what we got here that looks really nice definitely no fillers at all all right so there's one pound of seed like I mentioned it is gonna grow taller flowers and they can tolerate a little bit more shade so they're going to go in the back of the property or the back of the of the wildflower meadow line hoping they stand up a little higher now we'll mix in i don't know a pound of sand so just kind of make it even mix it up and put your spreader on the lowest lowest setting at least to get it dialed in and now I'm gonna just walk a line along the back of what I have tilled over there
not sure what to make of this. This is the uh, hummingbird and butterfly mix. We need like anti-cling bags. Maybe I'll just plant this whole bag in the ground. Hmm. A lot of wasted seed though. Open the world. Scratch that. If you turn it inside out, it brushes off easy enough with your hand. Crisis averted. So if you've just got a small pack of seeds, or you don't have one of these newfangled inventions that was clearly designed by Satan, you can always go with one of these smaller, cheaper, easier to use pieces of equipment. Granted, on a nice flat level manicured lawn, those things are probably great for spreading fertilizer or, or lawn food or I don't know, I don't use them. Uh, but on freshly tilled dirt, that is not fun. You know, it works. I did the first section with it and now I've got a couple small bags that I that I got like this is an all blue mix. <laughs> not sure how it's going to turn out, but I thought it might be neat to have a section of one exclusive color. So this should go a little bit easier. I'm telling you right now, if you could get one of those uh big bulk uh spreaders that kind of straps over your shoulders, but you just walk it, that would be the way to go for sure. So if you're in the market for one and you're gonna do this in a large area, get one of those uh, like reverse backpack looking ones. That would be sweet. Now, if you don't have the push, push and die spreader or the uh, handheld whirly bird gig, you can always go the old Johnny Appleseed method. Fill a bucket with your seed and sand, just let her rip. This is also very easy, but also, man, I'm gonna have a hard time knowing what I get, so, you know. Choose whatever you think fits your style the best. Okay, so we've got 15 pounds of seed strategically spread, broadcast on all four sections of property. Now, unlike seeds you'd plant at home or typical seeds, you don't want to bury them or cover them with material. These you just want to ensure have good surface contact. And what that means is, is that they are touching the ground well enough that the wind won't blow them away and that when the rain starts to come here in early spring, when the seeds begin to germinate, they are kind of nestled in the dirt enough so that they can take root. You can see here where I drove over, that is nice compacted dirt. This is all very loose. Now I don't necessarily think you need it to be as compact as, as driving over it. Uh, they make rollers that are great for just making sure those seeds are nice and snuggled in the dirt just right. I don't have one of those, so I'm going to make something. I'm gonna drag something behind the truck to kind of just apply some nice consistent pressure to all the seeds we just put in the ground because it does get windy and we don't want our new seeds to blow away. But if you don't have a roller or anything you could drag behind your truck to kind of get those seeds pressed in the dirt a little bit, uh, you, could, you could always water. Watering will help kind of set them and uh, also maybe give them some moisture, get them hydrated if it's late enough in the season or early enough in the spring. Here's where we're at. I've got a piece of drill pipe, the heavy silver metal pipe there. And I've got a piece of PVC run through it with holes drilled for my strap hooks that I'm gonna pull behind the brazier and my utility trailer. Idea being that this heavy uh, drill pipe will rotate around the PVC kind of like a lawn roller. 
and it's it's honestly pretty heavy. That six foot stick is probably 60 pounds, 70 pounds maybe. So I don't know if it's gonna work. I haven't tried it yet. If it fails, you're gonna see it fail. Okay. There's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube that kind of show the progression of a wildflower meadow. I looked. So maybe this will be a good reference for someone else wanting to start a wildflower meadow and see what's realistic. Uh, if you do the right steps and you give it time. So who knows? Hopefully in the subsequent videos on this channel you'll kind of see this slowly start to evolve and a year from now, two years from now, I hope that these seeds Sorry, my neighbor's track hoe, he's building the biggest slip and slide you've ever seen. Uh, hopefully in the subsequent years, the annual seeds will slowly start to spread to the other parts that I didn't plant. Idea being, you, you start on the perimeter and it kind of just creeps in and then eventually, a few years down the road, we've got nothing but wildflowers and trees, which is what I want. Thanks for watching.